Thumbs away. multiple weeks in between vlogs, but that doesn't mean it's been multiple weeks in between poker sessions. Hello from New York City, but need to tell you guys about poker that happened in Las Vegas, as well as on the high seas, and that would bring us up to the now. First on the agenda is a high-ish stakes pot limit Omaha session from the Aria fabulous Las Vegas casino. The game gets listed as 25-25, but almost always the straddle is on, so 25-25-50. And then a lot of times what happens before too long is that people just decide to make it 25-50. So playing 25-50, no max buy-in, but we're in for approximately 5,000 United States dollars here at the Aria. In this first hand, playing seven-handed, there's an under the gun raise up to $175. We're on the button looking down at king, queen, 10-9, double suited. That is a beauty. Even though the initial raise comes from under the gun, this hand is just so damn pretty that I cannot help myself but three bet, which I think is probably pretty standard. Maybe if the initial raiser under the gun is extremely tight, find some flats, but I don't think that's the case here. So we go ahead and put in the three bet up to $600. Action back around to the initial raiser under the gun, who puts in the four bet up to $1,875. Uh, we're not super deep here in a 25-50 game, but as mentioned, hand way too pretty. He's going to have aces almost always here, but it doesn't matter. Um, obviously, we would prefer our hand to not interact with aces as much when we are looking to make straights. Prefer to have a more middling rundown type of a hand, but is what it is. No going back now. We go ahead, make the call, and we're off to see three cards, which comes down king, ten, eight, two diamonds, one heart. All things considered, a pretty fantastic flop giving us top two pair here. He asks if we have about $3,000 more or so in our stack. And I say, yes, sir. Yes, we do. We have about $3,000 more. He goes ahead and rips it all in there. And of course, we are making this call. A lot of times in this game, they're going to want to run it twice. I have no preference either way at this point. And so we are off to see two turn cards and two river cards all in for approximately $10,000 right off the bat here. First board runs out with a three of hearts and the seven of clubs. That's looking pretty safe to me. But on the second board, it runs out four of diamonds, five of diamonds. So that front door flush arrives on the second board and we've got ourselves a chop scenario in this spot because my opponent rolls over the ace, ace, jack, deuce with two diamonds. Nut flush is good for the second run out. Two pair is good for the first run out. So we're gonna chop this one up. Second hand of note, we've got a bomb pot six ways, $200 a person. Bunch of money in the middle of these bomb pots. We've got the queen, 10, seven, deuce with two diamonds. Bomb pot six ways here. And the flop is gonna come down 10, seven, five on the top board and 10, 10, eight on the second board. So that gives us top two pair up top and trips on the second board. We've got an easy bet here, my friends. A lot of connectivity on both of these boards, top two and trips. Let's go ahead, fire out four. $300 and we get no resistance, which is always lovely. You know, when there's a small four figure amount of money in the middle up for grabs and you just drop three chips over a betting line and you get to collect all that money, life is pretty good, you know? Are the pigeons in your video? <laughs> I don't know, maybe. All right, this one a little bit more interesting. The $100 straddle is on, so playing 25, 50, 100, pot limit Omaha here. Folds around to the button who limps in, and we looked down at the eight, seven, five, four, double suited. I think it might be fun to find a raise here out of the small blinds. Not exactly super premium holding here, but if we're only raising high cards, like aces or like high card rundowns in this spot, I think we're gonna be lacking a little bit in board coverage. So why not mix it up here with the eight, seven, five, four, double suited. Go ahead and put in the raise out of the small blind, raise it up to $450. The big blind makes the call, and the limper, of course, as expected, makes the call as well. So it's a pretty interesting spot. If it comes down high cards, we can represent those, and if it comes down middling cards, we're actually going to hit those. And in this spot, the flop goes down 975 rainbow. So it's definitely an interesting spot because we have a blocker to the straight, and we flop two pair here. It's going to be a disguised two pair as well. 
And usually when we are in this kind of a spot where the flop favors the callers more so than us as the raiser, we're gonna start by checking, especially versus two opponents. So I go ahead and check, big blind checks, and the player on the button fires out for $750. Of course, we're going nowhere with our two pair plus straight blocker. Don't think we want to put in the raise here with bottom two versus two opponents. I just go ahead and put in the call and the player in the big blind gets out of the way with a fold. So heads up to a turn card that comes the four of clubs, second club. That's an additional pair for us. Don't necessarily need it, but gives us additional full house outs in the odd case that we are behind a straight, for example. Not gonna be folding because as mentioned, I feel like our hand is pretty disguised. So when I check it, plenty to check call, but my opponent this time checks it back after some thought. So feeling pretty good about my hand at this point. River is an interesting one. It's the ace of clubs, third club. So back to our flush possible. Liking my hand slightly less now with that backdoor flush possibility. Check it over to my opponent again who thinks about it for a little while before checking once again. I announce two pair, roll it over, show it on the 7-5, and that is the best hand. Drag this one in as well. All right, one more semi-interesting four-card hand from this session. We are now playing four-handed as this is a must-move table. We look down at the 9663 double suited. Obviously, not a banger of a hand. But four handed, we're going to be looking to mix it up in position. So I come in for the raise up to $175. Button is on my direct left. He's having none of it. He goes ahead and puts in the three bet up to $600. Action back over to me, double suited hands. Even though this is far from the prettiest hand, when it's double suited, I'm going to be in there making the call. So chuck in the $600. Let's go heads up to a flop that comes down pretty favorable, all things considered. King, six, deuce, rainbow, giving us middle set. We're liking this flop here. Check it over to the three better on the button, who kind of surprisingly decides to check it back. Turns the eight of diamonds, second diamond. Doesn't change too much here. And we are definitely going to be looking to pump some money into this pot at this point. So we're not super deep. I go ahead and fire out for $1,200. He's got maybe a thousand more than that or so. And this sends him into the tank for a very long time. Thinking about it, checking his hand multiple times, thinking it over, thinking it over before eventually deciding to go with his hand. He goes ahead and sticks all of his money in there. It's about 2K or 2,200 or so. We have a very easy call off at this point. Middle set, gotta be feeling like, unless he is acting his ass off that we have the nuts here. So we get it in, we're gonna run it twice. Turns and rivers are dealt. And turns out a set of sixes is good on two boards. So that is a lovely little experience playing 2550 Pot Limit Omaha at the Aria stack at this point is nine thousand and sixty five odd dollars into the game for somewhere around 5k i played the uh, 5 5 10 game for a little bit before and after this game and we call it a sesh let's wrap another session here at the aria casino resorts suites hotels spas and slot machines and uh went pretty well today we uh we we made some money I won somewhere between $4,000 and $5,000. I don't have the exact number in front of me, but I believe it's close to the high end of that range. So uh, yeah, life is good. And it's kind of funny because uh, one time in a video way back, in the way back machine, I, I gave you guys some advice about Pot Limit Omaha. Guys, I don't care what Joe Ingram tells you, do not play PLO. It is the worst game ever created. <sighs> I take it back. I take back that advice. Guys, check out the PLO games, the four card action. You'll love it. So that is uh, poker session A that I have to tell you guys about. Poker session B is not really a session. It was more of a trip. The WPT voyage happening on the high seas down in the Caribbean. I say high seas. Is it really the high seas if it's like in the Caribbean? I don't know. High seas is, yes. Oh, okay. She doesn't know. Uh, I don't know either. But anyway, tournaments, meetup games, restaurants, drinks, uh, hammocks, and excursions abound. Um, 
I did not win any of those tournaments, but I had a couple of very reasonable scores in, first of all, the 5K championship event. Uh, we finished with a very respectable, in my opinion, 19th place in that bird. That was good for $17,000 in cash and prizes. That, my friends, according to my math, is a $12,000 profit. Uh, so that's pretty nice. And then immediately following that bust out, I went ahead and registered for the $1,100 Pot Limit Omaha Tournament of Fun. Almost very close to missing the end of late registration. Max, max late reg that thing. Barely got in, but in we got and managed to not only cash that thing, we final tabled that thing. So we got ourselves a WPT final table and we finish the Pot Limit Omaha event in fourth place for, once again, a respectable amount of money in my opinion, somewhere around $8,000, just a hair less. Uh, so into that thing for $1,100, out for a little under $8,000, that is additional profits. Did I just lock it up right there and then and not play a single hand of poker beyond that? I wish, but no. A few more tournaments. There was an $1,100 mystery bounty, an $1,100 prime event, and then there was a $10,000 high roller event. That last event, $10,000, Managed to get in ace queen suited versus ace ten suited for approximately 22 big blinds and lose. And that is how you torch $10,000. Anyway, a lovely event uh, despite busting the high roller. We still come out in Profitville. It was Boosie's first ever cruise. Your thoughts on your first ever cruise? Wonderful. Confirmed wonderful and uh, always nice when you have a wonderful time. And he book, uh, he book some profit, you know, life is good. And so, that brings us to the now. Hello, once again, from New York City. Hello from New York. Hello from New York. Hello from New York. Hanging out here in Washington Square Park, is that right? Uh-huh, uh-huh. Taking in the sights and sounds, came up to visit a friend. Shout out to my friend Kate, happy birthday. Happy birthday, Kate. The final day, essentially, of our New York visit, which, is bittersweet. It will eventually be nice to uh, get back to our own bed, our own pillow. You brought your own pillow. Anyway, it'd be nice to return to my own pillow eventually. But before we do that, there will be poker to be played tonight. I got an invite to a private game. My first ever New York City private game happening tonight right over by Madison Square Garden. 5, 10, often 25. See you there. Empire State Building, you guys. Um, just real quick, I'm sure you guys are curious, what the hell are you doing in a private game in New York City? Uh, shout out to Ace Poker. I mentioned him when I played with that fellow, lovely guy. We played together at the uh, Studio 52 house in Las Vegas. We played on the Poker Night in America stream together. And uh, he said, if I want to come play in New York City sometime, let him know and he would sort it. And uh, here we are. However, there will be no ace poker in this game because apparently he's sick. So get well soon, ace poker. Um, but we are very much gonna be in there. As bench, it's gonna be 510. I think the $25 shadow is gonna be on a bunch. So uh, we're gonna wander over there. But just real quick, wanted to touch on something else because I have a little bit of time to kill as we stand here under the Empire State Building, as one does. In the last video that I put out, that video from Bobby's room, it was a fun one. Anytime you uh, get to do a bucket list type thing, that's usually a, gonna make for a fun video. Um, but there was the occasional comment that I found pretty interesting. I say interesting. Uh, what I actually mean is not all that interesting, but uh, the occasional comments, something along the lines of, hey man, you shouldn't be in that game. You clearly don't have the bankroll for that. If you're making those folds, you're out of your, uh, you're out of your element, you're out of your comfort zone, which to their credit, Sure, I'm out of my comfort zone, but that doesn't mean that you shouldn't be in the game. So if anyone out there is watching this and they are thinking about either, you know, playing a higher stake poker game or doing something unrelated to poker that puts them out of their comfort zone, that is very much okay. Regardless of how that thing turns out, what you want to be doing a lot of the time is getting outside of your comfort zone because that's where the growth is going to come from, guys. If you're a content creator and you're receiving comments saying don't do that again you don't belong there you're clearly uncomfortable doing that 
What you can do, maybe not literally, but mentally, you can tell those people to just fuck right off. Those people are of no benefit to you whatsoever. Uh, so anybody who tells you that you shouldn't be outside of your comfort zone is not someone that you want around you giving you advice. Being outside of your comfort zone is a great thing, and that's all there is to it. I could go on and on, but I just wanted to make sure that that was clear. If anybody uh, is out there receiving similar input from other people about being outside of your comfort zone and that being a bad thing, disregard. All right, guys, uh, let's go wander down to Madison Square Garden and uh, find a little poker game, shall we? underway here in the private game new york city this should be fun let's go 510 no straddle on in this hand and we see an early position raised up to 30 dollars over to us premium holding right away love to see it pocket queens let's go ahead and three bet this up to 110 dollars the player in the cutoff makes the cold call the button cold calls and that early position initial razor makes the call as well guys i don't always play private games in new york city but when i do i like to flop sets top set in fact queen jack four two diamonds love to see it initial razor checks could definitely find some checks on this kind of a board four ways, but there's so many draws available. Let's fire some money. I go ahead and see bet for $175. One fold, two folds, sadly, three folds. No action here with top set. Don't love to see that, but we love to see some profit right off the bat. All right, it didn't take long for that straddle to get put on. Now playing five, 10, 25 here, and action folds over to me in the cutoff, looking down at ace eight off suit. Not a great hand, but we're in lay position here. We got an ace, let's go ahead, get after it a bit. I raise it up to $75. Everyone folds except for the player in the straddle who makes the call. So heads up, two flop. It comes down king, queen, six, rainbow. Not a bad flop, pretty good for the initial raiser. We've got an ace. That ace usually gonna interact with the cards that are on the board, ace, king, ace, queen, ace, jack, ace, 10 for gut shots, etc. So when he checks it over to me, let's see bet. I bet half pot, $75, which my opponent calls. Turn is the 10 of clubs. If we didn't connect on the flop, maybe we connected on the turn with a hand like ace, jack. I think we're still gonna have all the strongest hands here. So when he checks it over to me, I'm gonna fire again. We don't need to go too big though when the board straightens out. The best result would be if he calls a wager here on the turn and then folds on the river. So let's fire out a bet here. I make it $180 to continue. And my opponent does continue, makes the call. And there's not gonna be too many cards that can help us here. And that includes the offsuit five here on the river. Checks it over to me, that's the ultimate brick. And I think we want to size up here. But before we can do that, my opponent leads out here for 50 bucks. Obviously trying to slow us down here, trying to get a cheap showdown. And with ace high and our foot on the gas on previous streets, cheap showdown, not gonna happen. Gonna have to step on that gas pedal and raise it up to $700. We do this with a variety of holdings here on this kind of a board, pocket aces, ace king, pocket kings, pocket queens, ace jack. Again, I think we're gonna have the majority of the strong hands here, so I like it. I like my line, I like it all the way up until my opponent eventually makes the call. We roll it over, show down the ace high, and my opponent makes a good call with his king nine off suit. That's good for top pair. Tough to get opponents to full top pair. Not necessarily an easy call though. So fair play to my opponent here. Unfortunately, that is going to put us into the hole in the early going of this game. All right, as expected in a home game in New York City, these guys like to get their gamble on. And every so often there is a double board PLO bomb pot, this time of the five card variety love to see it honestly right up my alley all right we got lots of cards here there's cards on the top board there's cards on the bottom board and all that adds up to us flopping a pair plus a gutter on top and we flop top two plus the nut flush draw on the bottom board checks to a player in middle position who fires out for two hundred dollars we got a lot going on here especially on that bottom board and we can definitely improve on the top board as well I feel like we're pretty nutted on the bottom board so let's go ahead and pot it i raise it to eight hundred dollars an action folds around to an early position player who puts in the cold call before coming back to that middle position player who also makes the call. 
Things developing here in this double board PLO hand, and we're not gonna have too much money left as the turns get dealt. The top board pairs, and the bottom board shows us the king of diamonds, which does not help us. But as mentioned, we're not exactly super deep here, and after action checks over to me here on the turn, we've got about $800 left. Not too much choice here. That's getting sent into the middle. Over to the player in early position who decides to go ahead and pot it all in and that is going to fold out the player in middle position. So we aren't exactly loving this spot, but we've got some mediocre holdings and some cards that could definitely improve us. I know that I don't have much and we are off to see the river cards here. The top board shows us another four for trips on the top board and we are left unimproved on the bottom board. So this is looking kind of disastrous, honestly, but my opponent somehow rolls over a worse hand on not only the bottom board, but the top board as well. Ace high is gonna be good on the top board. All the draws miss. He did have a pair on the top board, but when there's trips on the top board, you're now playing those trips plus the best two cards in your hands. Ace high is good for that board and the two pair on the bottom board is gonna be good as well. So we somehow end up scooping this double board PLO bomb pot with just ace high on the top board. That is pretty sweet. And that is going to get us back in the right direction, back in the green. All right, guys, I'm feeling myself. I'm gonna go ahead, raise up the nine seven of diamonds up to $75 from the under the gun spot. Happy to do this, happy to mix in some suited connectors, suited gappers and whatnot. Definitely not looking to knit it up here in a home game. Raise it up, we do. Player in the under the gun plus two spot wants to play for more money though. He goes ahead and three bets to 250 bucks. All the other participants at the table get out of the way and we're going nowhere. We make the call and we go heads up to a pretty nice looking flop here. Jack of diamonds, eight of diamonds, offsuit four. And that, my friends, is a straight flush draw. Check it to my opponent playing flow here who continues for a C bet and it's not a small one, it's $300. Not sure if down bets have uh, been introduced to East Coast poker, especially the home game scene. And if we were facing a down bet, then it's a raise all day. Can certainly still find a check raise here if we're gonna have all the sets, I think. Probably none of the two pairs. So raising or calling seems fine. I decide to call. Turn is very interesting. It's an offsuit five giving us a double gutter plus the flush draw. Check it over to my opponent again, who does not stop firing, this time for $500. And that is a significantly smaller bet, not in dollar amounts, of course, but in relation to the size of the pot. And that is going to be all of the encouragement that I need to go ahead and get aggro here. Definitely don't want to check call here with nine high. We're somewhere around $2,000 effective. I think we've got just the perfect stack size to go ahead and do some things here. Do some things, meaning check raise all in. All in. Bombs away. Even in the worst case scenario where my opponent snap calls with a set of jacks, we're still gonna be in okay shape here, but that's not what happens. Instead, my opponent thankfully goes into the tank, rooting for a fold here, but really don't mind it. Happy to gamble with this hand specifically, but even better news is that my opponent does decide to let it go. When you can take down a three bet plus C bet pot with just nine high, that is a very good result. Riding the waves early in this game, we were down after our ace-8 offsuit bluff attempt. That one failed. We have a successful double board bomb pot and then a very successful bluff with a 9-7 of diamonds, up a few thousand dollars in this game at this point. Spicy one coming up here as there are two limpers in this hand. We look down at pocket fives, following two limps and a small pair. Happy to just limp along here with our pocket fives and action goes around to the small blind who's not having this limping nonsense. Goes ahead, raises it up to $250. Two limpers make the call. And of course, we're going nowhere with our pocket fives. I call as well. So a multi-way flop, which comes down favorable for the fives. King seven five with two clubs. Living the dream, flopping sets. Small blind checks it, no C-bet from that gentleman, unfortunately. The first limp caller checks it as well before the hijack fires out for $600. Once again, not a small wager. I tend to weight my decisions to raise or to flat call, depending a lot of the time on the sizing that I'm facing. 60% pot size bet into three opponents, that's a pretty big size. 
So I'm just gonna call here and play deceptively. Obviously this is not necessary. Could just pump it up, raise it up, unblocking tons of good hands and draws. Looking back, kind of like a raise, honestly, but flat it is. Playing the small blind, it gets out of the way, makes the fold before the player in middle position. Now check raises all in, jamming for $950 additional to the 600. Player on my right in the hijack who fired out for the $600 bet, thinks about it for a little bit, gives me a glance before making the call, which is pretty interesting because this board is pretty wet, pretty dynamic, draws available, flush and straight draws. Seems at least slightly more likely that he's going to have those draws when he just flat calls, because if he had a strong hand, he's gonna wanna push me out of the pot. He would have to assume that I'm gonna have those draws a fair amount of the time when I do not raise. He's not gonna wanna give a good price to those draws, so I think that leans him a little bit closer to those draws more often than value hands. With that being the case, I don't think we wanna go ahead and flat call this raise. I think we wanna charge all those draws. It is going to look super strong when we put in a raise here because we're essentially raising to create a side pot. There is no side pot at this point. Definitely a little bit awkward with the stack sizes, but I decide on a raise up to $2,200. It's not that much more, but it does charge those draws. Maybe we're even giving them a fair price, but we do wanna charge something at least. My opponent in the hijack goes deep into the tank here, thinking it over for a very long time before eventually deciding to toss those cards away, it sends them into the muck and does say that he did have a gut shot draw. So if he does just have that gut shot draw, I especially like my raise since we don't have to protect from that many cards. But all that being said, this ends up being a massive cooler situation because after I show my pocket fives, my opponent in middle position shows us pocket sevens for a set over set situation. And unfortunately now there is no side pot. So we have one single out. We're gonna run it twice, try and hit that one out one of these two times, but that is just unlikely and does not come home. That is the opposite of the type of run good that we had in mind. Things were looking beautiful, hitting bottom set, but unfortunately quite the opposite. We get no downtime because almost essentially immediately after that hand comes this hand where the straddle is on, playing 5, 10, 25. The player on my right who tank folded on the flop in that last hand, he now comes in for a very reasonable raise up to $400. 5, 10, 25, 400. The very casual 16X pre-flop raise. It's a spot that we've all studied many, many times, I'm sure. And when I say very studied, I mean I have no clue what to do when I look down at Ace King next to act. Do we wanna just flat call the 16X raise? I mean, it wouldn't be unfathomable, but I mean, come on. Are we gonna flat call with Ace King? Even versus the $400 raise, I say no. I say we go ahead and put in the three bet after I think it over for a little bit of time. Again, 16X, not exactly something you see every day, but we're gonna go ahead, three bet this one up to $1,300. My opponent, he's a fun guy, he's a talkative one. He says he's not gonna be folding this hand. All right, fair enough, but I am not going to be flatting this hand. I'm gonna go ahead, find the three bet here with our ace king. Let's go ahead, three bet this up to $1,300. As expected, action folds all the way around to the initial raiser, who is a man of his word. He goes ahead and makes the call, and we go heads up to a flop that definitely does not help us. Eight, four, four, two clubs leaving us unimproved, but good news is that pretty tough for my opponent to hit this flop too hard either. He checks it over to me and we've got about $3,000 at this point in our stack. There's almost $2,700 out there in the middle. It might look a little bit obvious if we just go ahead and rip it in there, but it is also the easiest play because if we bet smaller and he goes ahead and check raises, I guess we can call off there, but it's not gonna be super comfortable. If he flat calls, we're gonna have no idea what's going on. Certainly we can get value from worse if he's got a gut shot like he thought about calling off with in the previous hand. Maybe he'll call off this time. If he's got some sort of combo draw or at least a flush draw, he's gonna call off with that as well. So we can get value from worse when we go ahead and do what we do here. I go ahead and rip it all in for the $3,000 that I have in front of me. And my opponent, once again, goes into the tank. You're not strong, bro. There's always the turn so, on river, though. So is there, is there a chance of doing this with, like, some, like, fucking, like, 5-6? Or, like, some, like, 
Garbage. Is 10 high good? Three minute clock has been requested. I fold, I fold. Folds up. Thank you. You don't even want to. 10 high was no good. Yeah, I have to see He was live. Eventually, my opponent, who I believe has virtually nothing in his hand, goes ahead and folds that nothing. And we get to drag another pot here with just ace high and about thirteen dollars or $1,400 worth of profit in this hand. Shortly after that, another fun one where I have the $25 straddle on and there's an early position raise up to $150, much more reasonable raise size this time. There's one caller and we look down at the 6-3 of clubs in the straddle spot. Did I come all the way to New York City from Las Vegas to fold the 6-3 suited not to fend the straddle? No. I go ahead, make the call, and we go three ways to a flop. That comes down king, seven, five, two hearts, one club. That, my friends, is a gut shot plus a backdoor straight flush draw. Essentially flopping the world here, we check it over to the initial raiser, who goes ahead and fires out for a $300 C-bet. There's one fold, and again, flopping the world, we're going nowhere. I go ahead and make the call. And let me ask you guys this. Have you ever just absolutely drilled a turn card as hard as this one? The turn is an offsuit four. That gives us a straight immediately. Living the dream, we check it over to my opponent who does not disappoint. He goes ahead and fires out this time for $800. Love to see it. Expect to have the nuts here virtually all the time. There is a better straight available. It's very unlikely though, and being out of position, we definitely wanna go for some additional value here. I'm gonna go ahead and check raise, and I make it $2,600 to go. Sends my opponent into the tank for a little bit. We've got dreams of visiting the Statue of Liberty with all of our newfound winnings, including those that we're about to have versus pocket kings, pocket sevens, pocket fives, and pocket aces, but as it turns out, my opponent has none of those hands. He goes ahead and sends his holdings into the muck. He asked to see the river card, that river card breaks out, so it seems like he had some sort of a draw. His draw just wasn't quite as strong as our draw was. In this hand, the straddle is on on my direct right, and that puts us first to act when we look down at pocket jacks. Go ahead, raise this up, $100 to go. Over to the player in the under the gun plus two spot, who wants to play for more money. He goes ahead and three bets it up to $275. And the player in the button, cold calls. Back over to us, we've got a little bit of a decision, but usually when I'm raising from under the gun and a player three bets us, who is also in relatively early position, ranges are super narrow and jacks are probably a little bit on the borderline here between putting in the four bet, especially with that cold caller or putting in the call and navigating post flop. I typically enjoy a good post flop navigation. So I go ahead and put in the call and we go three ways to a flop. Flop goes down five, three, three, two clubs, one heart. That gives us the over pair. I check it, UTG2 checks it, and the player on the button checks as well. Feeling good about my jacks now, still feeling all right about it when the turn comes down the seven of hearts, second heart. I'm gonna go ahead and fire now, and obviously benefits from some equity denial. That's a fancy way of saying we're betting for value. I fire out for $550 here on the turn. The player in the under the gun two spot makes the fold, but the player on the button is going nowhere. He makes the call. So heads up to a river card, which comes down the nine of hearts, backdoor flush completing, but we still got ourselves an over pair. With that backdoor flush coming in, I'm not sure if we can get too much value from a hand like a seven. Maybe if we size real small, blocker bet seems reasonable, but a check seems reasonable as well. I decided to check it, but my opponent does no such thing. Loads up the clip here, grabs 13 $100 chips and fires out $1,300. I take a look at my hand and we've got the jack of hearts in our hand and we do not have the jack of clubs. Pretty much the easiest way to determine whether or not to call in these kind of spots, blocking that backdoor flush, unblocking front door flush. I feel like if you had a hand like pocket nines or pocket sevens, those hands would have found a bet on the flop a lot of the time. Satan goes for a hand like ace three. Maybe he's trapping with pocket five sometimes. And yes, the blocker system is not a perfect system. We will run into a flush some fair amount of the time, but that is something we're just gonna have to live with. I'm going nowhere with my pocket jacks. We've got ourselves an over pair to the board here. Grab the $1,300, don't think about it for too long and send it. Hoping those chips come back with friends and in this case, they will be as my opponent shows down pocket fours. That's a pair, that's a pair that we can beat. Fours and threes are gonna lose two jacks and threes in this case. That's a good size pot here. And it's always nice when you have the better pair. Some things go our way in this game. Not every hand works out. One of our bluffs fails, but one of our other bluffs gets through and we're able to make some good hands along the way.
back in Brooklyn now, here at the Hoxton Williamsburg. That is the hotel that I am crashing. That was a fun game. Uh, we get into this game for $3,000 and we don't add on any additional dollars, even though it was a little bit sketchy there. Uh, we, were, we were underneath the $3,000 watermark there for a little while, um, but things turned around and that was a fun game. Uh, we cashed out of this game for $8,500 fifty dollars or so so that is a uh, lovely evening here in new york city to cap off what is a pretty fun five days and uh back-to-back -back trip hopping off wpt voyage shoot straight up here to new york city uh, i would love to spend some more time here in new york city um, and do this more often obviously that's easy to say when things go your way in a poker game but uh big fan big fan of the city here i could definitely see myself spending a lot more time here in the city so who knows, maybe that'll happen. Um, but yeah, gonna keep plugging away here. Trying to play higher, trying to play bigger, play some bigger pots, get some bigger results here on the blog. And uh, if you would like to follow along, you can do so by subscribing to the channel.